When it comes to choosing therapies with our patients, I think really the most important thing is to assess what does somebody really want to get out of it? What's their goal? How do they want to achieve that? And how do we assess this? It's through honesty. It's about the honest assessment of a two-way process. What do you want to achieve? What have I got in my armory of therapies that can help you achieve those goals? So it's, it's about talking very openly about the prognosis of a condition. And it's talking very openly about the side effects of treatment and how those might interfere with someone's ordinary everyday life. So it's a two-way process, it's a conversation. And I think that having that open conversation with someone is probably the best way of, of talking about communication because that's really all it is. Watching and waiting is absolutely essential part of therapy in CLR. And it's about balancing risks of the treatment against the, treat, uh, the risks of the disease itself. For early stage patients who come to me with low levels of disease, who are otherwise reasonably well, functioning well, and not experiencing problems with infections, then the addition of therapy may not improve their quality of life. So the risks of treatment are often higher than the risks of the disease itself at the early stages. And you need to wait for that balance to change. So when the balance changes and the risks of treatment become much more relevant or relative to the risks of the disease and they're in balance, then you can start thinking about whether treatment becomes appropriate. So watching and waiting is really, really important, but it brings its own challenges. So one of the challenges of watching and waiting is the worry and the concern that continues constantly leading to a state of alertness, a state of preparedness, which can for some people be really quite exhausting. The constant worry about the disease, the worry about what the doctor might say to them when they come, and just this sense that some crisis is about to happen. So the loss of confidence that someone might have when they're given a diagnosis of CLL can be a real issue. And that state can go on for a long time. So how do we build up people's confidence? How do we give permission, if you like, to go and live a normal life? Because it's for, for some years and often for a long period of time, people should be encouraged to live as normal a life as they possibly can. And watching and waiting is a challenge for that. We call it watching and waiting. Patients often call it watching and worrying. There's no way out of that because that, that's that state of not treating is important, but actively managing aspects of the immune system, encouraging the uh, attendance to comorbidities, even, you know, even small things. Make sure your blood pressure is okay. Make sure you have a correct diet, good balanced diet, exercise within the, your own limits. And all of those things can control your health, improve your comorbidity, and increase your sense of well-being. So there are active things that we can do, and of course they apply to all of us, but you know, why wouldn't they apply to somebody with CLL just as much as anyone else? We often have this, this sort of secret goal that you know, with our patients with CLL, we can actually make them better than they otherwise would be because of this engagement over a long period of time and the relationship we have with our patients over a long period of time where we can work together to look at those comorbidities, those, those minor illnesses that might accumulate as time goes by.